Welcome everybody out there in your homes all over Australia and the world who have logged in to join us this evening tonight. Uh, it's a truly international event and we're so thrilled to welcome our presenters and guests from across Timor-Leste, Kenya, Papua New Guinea and more. My name is Jacinta Parsons and I'm going to be your MC this evening for this very special live crowdfunding event in support of Child Fund Australia. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and recognising their continuing connection to land, waters and culture. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. For those joining us from around the world, we extend that recognition and respect to the traditional owners of the land on which you are joining us from tonight. Now, since this virtual format can be unpredictable, please be patient and laugh with us if things don't go quite as smoothly as we hope. Tonight's event is powered by the Funding Network, an Australia-based non-profit that brings people together for good. We're thrilled to be supporting Child Fund Australia to raise much needed funds for their critical work and to profile three successful programs which Child Fund has a proven track record in delivering with the support of generous donors like you. Tonight's event is made possible thanks to the generosity of our major donors and board members. We've got a fast paced program planned for you and to get us started, I'd like to invite CEO of Child Fund Australia, Margaret Sheehan to say a few words. Prior to her role, sorry about that, as CEO, Margaret spent four years as Child Fund Australia's International Program Director, having begun her career as a teacher and lecturer. Margaret's commitment to working with young people led her to her first international post with the World Health Organization. Margaret now has over two decades of experience in managing international development programs and personnel in field office settings and has completed a master's in public health. Please welcome Margaret. Hello everyone and let me add my warm welcome to tonight and thanks so much for joining us for this inaugural event. I was so pleased when I looked at the list of who was signing in to see that we've got people from across the world. We've got from Sydney to Seoul, Melbourne and Manila, Long Beach, and Laos, and on top of that, we've got New Zealand and the United States. And of course, as Jacinta said, we've got our presenters from PNG, Timor-Leste and Kenya. Tonight's a really exciting um, night for me and for Child Fund, because we can take the opportunity to share our successful programs. And we'll hear this from three dedicated humanitarians who are working right at the coalface. The programs that they're going to talk about really look at very important issues of maternal and child health, TB and infectious diseases, and poverty-related hunger. What these programs all have in common, though, are that they focus on improving the opportunities and the lives of some of the most vulnerable children in the poorest parts of the world. The first guest you'll hear from tonight is Nanivia. She's from Child Fund Timor. Child Fund um, has been working in Timor since 1990. And in Timor, two of five deaths of women aged 15 to 49 are pregnancy related. And shockingly, two out of three women don't give birth in safe environments or in a clinic. They deliver at home in very unsafe circumstances. In Australia, I think we all take for granted that you can deliver in a hygienic and a, and a safe in, environment, yet Darwin is only one hour from Timor-Leste, but in terms of maternal child health, they're worlds apart from each other. Um, Nini will share her experience of, about working in Timor-Leste in the remote areas and talk about the program and what we're doing, in fact, to prevent maternal and child deaths. Chege, our second presenter, He's currently the country director in Kenya, which is his home country. He'll share how COVID-19 has resulted in 1.7 million job losses. And this is on top of devastating locust plague, floods and drought. He'll talk particularly about the health and nutrition program there that is really preventing hunger 
and will prevent future stunting and malnutrition. Chigo suggests that currently what Kenya is facing is perhaps the worst crisis they've seen in the 60 years that child funds worked in Kenya. Finally, you'll hear from Olive, hopefully that is, if we get her online, there's always those issues with remote connections. She's from Papua New Guinea. She grew up in a tiny rural community that's four hours from Port Moresby. 86% of people in Papua New Guinea do live in remote communities, and most of those communities don't have adequate access to health facilities and health care. Olive now oversees our remote outreach program that brings healthcare and immunisation to rural villages. This program essentially is battling TB, infectious diseases and maternal and child deaths in PNG. Funds raised tonight from these programs will allow us to reach more people, in more children in these communities in PNG. Put simply, we have some successful interventions and lots of the time now we know what to do. The issue is having the resources so we can spread good programs to more children. The three causes are all in urgent need of support. So the funds raised tonight will allow us, as I said, to extend these programs. Tonight is billed as a festive fundraiser. So if you feel inclined, perhaps grab a drink, um, enjoy some merriment with people you're with or on your own, but please tap into your inner spirit of generosity and gift giving at this special festive time. I know you'll find the causes that are presented tonight are all worthy. Maybe you'll find one cause you want to support, perhaps two, and maybe you'll find it in your generosity to support all three. But thanks again to everyone who's in attendance. I think that we can do something really very special tonight together. I'm in hearty agreement. Thank you so much for uh, joining us this evening, Margaret, and for that warm welcome. Now, let's get to it, shall we? You're going to be hearing from three amazing leaders who'll be telling you about the work they're involved in with Child Fund. Then they're going to ask you for your support. Each presenter will have five minutes to tell you their story. Then we'll answer your questions as well. You're going to see on your screen down the bottom there a section where you can ask a question or if you'd prefer to, you can vote on the question that you would like to be asked. Feel free to use the chat box throughout the event as you are. It's so nice to see you saying hello to each other right around the world and right around Australia. Hello to everybody joining us. Um, and what we'll do is also during um, the uh, pledging round, you'll be able to put your names in that chat box and uh, we'll be able to do it there. After we've heard from all the three presenters, we're going to facilitate live pledging through that chat room. I'm gonna give you more instructions when we get to that part of the program. So for now, sit back. As Margaret mentioned, maybe grab yourself a glass of something, something yummy to eat, wherever you might be, relax, tap into that inner uh, generosity that uh, she also spoke of and listen to three amazing stories from around the world. Let's meet our first presenter. Nanivia de Silva Barreto's passion for helping people in her home country of Timor-Leste has led her on a global pursuit of knowledge and experience. She completed her university studies in New Zealand, has studied in Japan and the United States, and recently became the YSEA LI Professional Fellow at the Martin Luther King Junior Family Outreach Centre. Nanivia joined Child Fund Timor-Leste last year as the Health Project Coordinator in 2019. Please welcome Nanivia, who is joining us from Dili in Timor-Leste. Thank you, Jacinta, and hello, everyone. Before I start, I would like you to take a second and imagine this. Imagine that you or someone you love is pregnant. What's the first thing you do when you find out that you're pregnant? You probably schedule a visit to the doctor. You might start thinking about when you'll get to see your baby on an ultrasound. Maybe you'll start looking at your closest hospitals. Now, I want you to imagine that you are in a remote village here in Timor-Leste. 
If you're here in Timor-Leste, you wouldn't even think about an appointment with a doctor because our country is limited doctors. You would not be looking at the hospitals because the hospitals are so far away from your house. And in fact, clinics in rural areas lack water, sanitation, and electricity, and many are only open one or two days a week. In my recent visit to the field, I met with Berta, one of the mothers we reach through child funds activities. Berta shared her stories about her previous six pregnancies, where she gave birth to her children at home. There was no medicine, no medical equipment, and her baby's umbilical cord would be cut with whatever sharp materials she could find at her home, like unsterile knives and scissors. Even today, two in three moms in rural areas still do not give birth at a health facility. What would happen if something went wrong? If you are in Australia, you'd probably be in the best place to deal with an emergency. But if you're here in Timor-Leste, in a village like the one that Berta comes from, the closest hospitals are several hours away. And guess what? There are no ambulances to take you there. What happens in these situations? Tragically, children and mothers lose their life. We experience 10 times newborn mortality rate here in Timor-Leste compared to Australia, meaning you are 10 times more likely to lose your child right after birth. Complications from childbirth are also the leading cause of deaths for women in childbearing age. Berta herself lost one of her child soon after birth and another one of her children passed away before turning five. Sadly, even after these tragedies, Berta did not go straight to the hospitals or clinics the next time she found out she was pregnant. You may ask, why didn't she go? Well, the truth is, deaths in childbirth here are so common that it has become accepted. Most women in Timor-Leste have lost someone in their lives whether it is a sister, an auntie, a colleague, or a mother. But for Berta, she, her story has a good end. It was only after she started to feel something wrong with her seventh pregnancy that she decided to see one of child funds health uh, staff who was working in her community. This may have been a life-saving decision that she made and we were so glad that she did. My colleague referred Berta uh, convinced Berta actually to see a doctor who would discover that Berta has tuberculosis, which added a significant risk to her pregnancy. Soon after, she was referred to the hospital where luckily she gave birth to two healthy twins. Berta spent three months in the hospital recovering after her babies were born. Berta shows us that the majority of these deaths are preventable. So, to stop these deaths, we need to educate communities and change attitudes about childbirth. And this is exactly what we have been doing through Child Fund's Health in the Hands of People project here in Timor-Leste. We train volunteers who work in remote areas doing running health promotion sessions. They encourage and refer women to go to the health clinic and checkups and educate them about how it can help prevent deaths in childbirth. They are the advocates of the types of measures that we know save lives. Each of our volunteers support at least eight pregnant women in their village and many more mothers every month. Berta was at one of these sessions when she learned that she was a high-risk pregnancy and was referred to the hospital. After seeing the impact it made on her life, she became an advocate for the service. She tells her family, friends, and everyone in her village to go to the health promotion sessions so they can access, so they can access the services that can, that can help them and their children. Now at Child Fund, we want more children and more women in Timor-Leste to survive childbirth. For that to happen, we need to train more volunteers and run more health promotion sessions. From Child Fund's Health in the Hands of People project, we know that $100 can ensure volunteers in, eight, in one villages to receive the latest training and information that can help them 
to, that, can, that could help save the lives of children and women in their village. $500 can support our awareness raising campaign in two villages. And if you're able to reach our goal of raising $20,000 tonight, we will be able to continue run our mother support groups in eight villages next year. These groups bring women together to learn about safe childbirth and take part in the practical lessons of nutrition, hygiene, and other topics which keep children safe. So tonight, we invite you through your generosity to support our program so we can keep mothers and children and Timor-Leste safe. And just know that your contribution will put a smile on a mother's face for her lifetime. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Nivia. That was wonderful. And you'll see in the chat box, people have been really moved by your words tonight. So thank you so much. As we mentioned, uh, there's an opportunity for you to ask Nanivia a question. Down the bottom there, you'll see an ask a question box. You can either write a question or you can vote for one of the questions that you would like asked. But I've got um, a couple for you, actually, Nanivia. Um, this one, what, what's the biggest change that you think you've seen as a result of this project? Well, thanks for that question, Yacinta. Uh, personally, from what I see, I think one of the most significant changes for the project is that when you go to the remote village, you'll get to see the mothers, especially those who are like the pregnant women, they started to go to the health clinics for checkups, especially the antenatal care. And also they love to share their stories to other women, just like Berta, encourage other women to do the same. So. It's it helps a lot, and I think, yeah, it's it's just the fact that women started not only women but other men also like started to support their wives to do the health checkups, especially during the pregnancy and after the pregnancy, and seeing the change in the attitudes of health seeking behavior, I think that's one of the most significant changes that the project has bring to the community here. Wonderful, yeah. such a such an interesting um, answer. This question from uh, Michaela saying, thank you so much, Nanivia. What is the best part of your day at work? I would say um, the best part of the work is knowing that it's actually child funds field staff are doing something in the community, helping the women and children in their community to not only like go and sharing the information, but, but be there, be part of the community and support the communities anytime they need support. Refer them to hospital or health clinics, the closest to their house, and sometimes go with them to there. So the best part of, of my work would be that one, like knowing that we actually doing that, just not only talk about it, but we're doing that in the community, at the community level. So. Oh, fantastic. This one from Kath um, Mulligan, who says, how many hospitals are there in Timor-Leste with maternal facilities? Mm, I don't have the exact numbers of how many hospitals are here, but I know for sure we only have four referral hospitals at the municipality level and one hospitals at the national level. And just like I said in, the, in my story, um, at the clinic or health center level. We do have like the uh, maternity ward for the women, but then we, don't, we just don't have enough equipment, enough supplies, enough support to su support the women. I, I hope that's answered the question there. Yeah, no, beautifully done. And again, so much uh, love and support and interest in your work. Uh, good luck tonight. I know it'll be wonderful. We are going to dig deep. And uh, congratulations already on the great work that you do. Thank you. Thank you, Nanivia, joining us. We'll have an opportunity to support that work in just a moment. But now for our second presenter. Chege Gugi is um, joining us. Uh, he's had 25 years of experience in international development. Before joining Child Fund Kenya as country director in 2018, Chege was the national director of Child Fund Ethiopia and Child Fund Mozambique. Please welcome Chege, who is joining us from Nairobi in Kenya. Hello. Thank you, Jacinta. I wish I did not have to search through the dump site 
to feed my siblings. These were the words of Jacob, a 12 year old boy that I met recently when I went out to the field in one of the informal settlement areas that we serve in Nairobi. Jacob did not have to, be, to, to live that way. That is searching food through the dump site. He was in school, he had a good family. The father had a business that he was learning of a carpentry workshop and he used to fairly provide for his family. But come COVID, he was one of the victims of job losses because of COVID and its implications. Jacob's father is one of 1.7 million Kenyans that have lost jobs since COVID started here. Jacob and his family have subsequently have to go to bed without food because even getting a job now for his father is a problem. Jacob misses going to school, but schools as part of the COVID containment measures in Kenya have partially been crossed. Now we are seeing families worried and having to make very hard options. One option is for the parents and caregivers to go out there and look for a job and feed their family or and, and, and risk infected or stay at home and watch their children stay hungry, even themselves. Those are the stark options that they have to make. Now, prior to COVID, that was prior to March, because COVID started in March, we had one point, sorry, we had one, one in every three Kenyans was living in less than $3 a day. Now, when COVID came, it complicated everything. We had already, we were already suffering from desert locust investigation. These are locusts or insects that eat anything green on their way. In addition to that, we had flooding in some of the areas that washed away food in, in the farms and all that, even some infrastructure. Prior to that, we had drought, again, which complicated everything. So we are seeing a situation now where the most vulnerable are carrying the heaviest burden. These are people even without social safety net. So they have no other means. When they lose their jobs or they, they lose the, the, the farm, they have no other way of providing for themselves. Now with COVID, there are hidden or invisible problems that are not seen. And basically this is hunger and healthcare because people are unable now even to go to hospitals. Sorry for that. Sorry, my internet is misbehaving. So sorry for that, the internet issue. So people having challenges providing for them. And there's a biggest risk that we have now. The biggest risk we have is losing a whole generation. Because if you are not able to provide, as you know, if you are not able to provide proper nutrition and health care during the formative, formative stages of a child, then their future is groomed, is doomed. So how do we address this? As an organization, Child Fund has a program that is specifically focusing on addressing the health and nutrition needs of the children. In that program, we are providing food delivery, we are providing cash transfer, and cash transfer is important because this gives the families the option of deciding how, how to use that money. They either decide to use for food, to buy medicine, and even to buy some other things that they need in the house. Another intervention we have employed is we are giving them vouchers. These are vouchers they can use to redeem items they need from given little shops. Again, that gives them the dignity to walk the shop and choose what, what they want. Now, despite that challenge, I think with the support of other people, agencies, and people like you, we are optimistic we can overcome the, the, the COVID problem, which is impacting our children and preventing their growth. From my experience in this project of health and nutrition, 
we have seen that if you have a hundred dollars you can provide food two meals a day to a family for over one month with five hundred dollars you can buy 350 kilograms of pulses those are grains like rice beans green grams and all that and that can feed 25 households within a month so with the with 15000 that we are asking we are sure we can be able to reach 1500 house 1500 households with food basket that would include cooking oil flour rice milk and that can serve them for over a month for especially addressing the needs of the most vulnerable these are the children so it is for it's this information we have and the impact we are seeing as a, as we mentioned i have never seen this in my close to 10 years as a country director across three countries and in our 60 years as an organization in kenya never seen such a, an impact and the risk that it poses to vulnerable households especially our children so it is for this that we come to you because we know jointly we can address this we can overcome we can overcome the, the covid and avoid another humanitarian pandemic so jointly we, we 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 come to you asking you to join our support our efforts to help provide emergency nutrition and health services to our children. If you, are, if you are able to give us this money, we are able to reach the children and we will and put, build a bright future for these children. We will be able to report to you. We'll be able to send you stories of how this has changed around the life of the children, including photo and reports of how this money has been used so gently i believe we can overcome this can overcome this sorry do you know the importance of 10th december today is the international human rights day so you are giving is going to help address all the rights of the children as you know one of the right to the children is health and sustainable livelihoods. So you will be, you are giving, will be addressing and honoring the Universal Human Rights Day. With those words, I pray to you to come work with us to overcome COVID and build a future, strong future for our children because we will have avoided losing a whole generation. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much, Tege. It was wonderful to hear those powerful words and to get a sense of the work that is being done over where you are right now. So interesting to hear. Do know that you can ask a question right now in that section down there, or you can vote on something that's already in there. Tege, I've got lots of questions for you. I'm so interested in your perspective on cash transfers and why you think they're so effective. Thank you, thank you, Jacinta. I think one thing is the dignity that confers to that family, that they get money and they, they keep that money and they are able to make that decision. Where do they, where do they want to use it? How do they want to use it? It's very dignified because nobody even knows just like a person who is working will move money from their pocket and, and go and do shopping, they'll be doing the same. That's one thing. The other thing is in some places, there's no market. There's no market where you can buy food and take to them. So this will give them opportunity also to buy at their own rate. You know, when, the, for example, if you give them five, five kilograms, they may not need that at immediate. So when you give them money, they are able to spend it at their own pace and choices. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful. Um, Angela Finn has a question for you too. It's incredible that we're talking to you in Kenya right now, isn't it amazing? Um, but to hear about some of that complexity, um, Angela says, with the flood, the locusts and the droughts, where and how do you obtain the food? 
I, I, that, that's okay. I think the biggest the biggest challenge here is the supply chain, because the flooding sometimes they cut the supply chain, so you're not able to do that. So what we'll do is, as an organization, we are able to work with suppliers, buy in bulky, and be able to transport that to to the areas where it's needed. The complication with COVID is because of so, uh, physical distance and social distancing, it's hard to take such things. So we prefer to give them money, then they can buy where they are. But we, we, in case where there's no food, we work with the government and suppliers that they can be able to, uh, to arrive some of them, others they can be able to transport in bulk. Yeah, incredible. Um, Angela also, I probably didn't mention um, the fact that, you know, COVID-19 has been a massive impact. What's happening at the moment in Kenya? Are border closures? Um, are the markets shut down? What's the sort of day-to-day -day experience right now? Thank you for that, Jacinta. I think I should have mentioned the cases in COVID in Kenya are growing at astronomical mm -hmm. rate. As we speak now, we have close to 90,000 positive cases. We're getting an average of... Uh, 800 positive cases a day for the last couple of weeks. So it markets, initial markets were closed and that is what contributed to job losses. Markets have been open now, borders have been opened, but there are restrictions in movement, but that because of the supply chain, broken supply chains, we still have problem of, of COVID and the impact. Another impact I can say is schools are closed. And yeah. during all this, Children used to get food at school. In fact, we were feeding, as a country, we were feeding 1.6 million children in schools. Now that schools are closed, those children do not have food. Oh, it's, um, it's, we're so grateful that you can share with us the story and also the work that you do. And we are really hopeful tonight that we'll be able to raise some really much needed funds to support the great work that you're doing. Chege, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you Thank for the opportunity. You. Oh, absolutely. Wow. Don't you feel so lucky? We all went all the way to Kenya there to hear some of the incredible work that's being done and understanding some of the great complexities uh, that that environment is uh, providing at the moment. Moving on to our third and final presenter for tonight's event, Olive Oa. Olive is a public health professional with 22 years of experience in PNG. She spent over a decade in social and behavioural research with the PNG Institute of Medical Research, conducted STI and HIV AIDS surveillance with the Ministry of Health, and more recently shifted to working with non-government organisations. Olive moved to Child Fund in 2012, where she holds the role of Program Manager for Health and she leads projects on maternal and child health and tuberculosis. Olive has contributed to two recent reports by Child Fund, including the 2018 report on maternal deaths in PNG. She loves her work and is passionate about helping communities, women and children in particular. Please welcome Olive, who is joining us from Port Moresby in Papua New Guinea. Ah, oh, Olive. Hello. So, Olive, you would love you to um, share with us your presentation tonight. If you can hear us, that would be wonderful. We know we're coming across some interesting connection, but that would be great, Olive. Thank you. Thank you, and um, good evening, everyone. Let me share with you a true story from Papua New Guinea about my son. When my son Daniel was 13 years old, he nearly died of tuberculosis. It was so horrible. He was very sick for six months. He wouldn't eat and continuously complained of the pain he had. He lost a lot of his body weight from 54 kilograms to 27. He would cry every night and he was too sick to continue his education and participate in the activities. I felt so 
so sorry for him. There were times I thought he, would, he was going to die. If we didn't get him diagnosed, he would have died. Thankfully, Daniel survived. He's now 24. He just graduated from university and he loves the work he does. Daniel is one of the lucky ones. Many children in Papua New Guinea with tuberculosis never get diagnosed and treated. This is the situation for many rural children. Here in Papua New Guinea, we are fighting a war against tuberculosis. Every year, more than 7,500 children catch the disease. And 7,500 mothers watch their children get sicker from this horrible disease. I know what those mothers are going through. No mother should have watched their children get sick every day. I have gone through this and I know what it's like. That's why I joined Child Fund, a great organization. At Child Fund, we have a goal to end tuberculosis in Papua New Guinea. Now, this goal may be difficult, but we can do it. Tuberculosis has a vaccine. It has been eradicated from Australia. And tuberculosis has, also has treatment. It is so sad to see children get sick from tuberculosis and die when it's both curable and preventable. To eradicate tuberculosis, you need two things. That is to detect as early as you can and start treatment as soon as possible. Our challenge here in Papua New Guinea is that nine in 10 people live in the rural remote areas, which are hard to reach. And most of these mothers in the small villages have to walk very long distances to the nearest health clinic. So if their children have tuberculosis, it's hard for them to get diagnosed and treated. So how do we solve this? We bring healthcare to the people. Every month, me and my team load up our four-wheel vehicle with healthcare workers, with the vaccines and medical equipment and set out to reach the hard to reach villages. We spend a week long visiting all these different villages and set up remote clinics. When we get to these villages, we set up what we call an outreach clinic. I wish you could come with me. Everyone, the whole village turns up. At the clinic, if a mother has a sick baby, she can see a health worker. If a mother has a question, we can give the answer. If people have tuberculosis, we can get them diagnosed and start the treatment. Getting them to start treatment is a way of eradicating tuberculosis in Papua New Guinea. We set up these remote clinics in those remote villages once in three months. Every three months we visit to, we make visits to these clinics. Over time, I have seen the impact that these remote and regular clinics have transformed the lives of mothers and children. Having a clinic in their own villages gives them a smile. On top of the clinics that we set up, we have the TB treatment supporters who are trained by Child Fund. TB treatment supporters from the villages we work in, they make sure that people are followed through throughout the treatment. 
so that they cannot spread the disease in their families nor their villages. This is a very important part of making sure that people are cured. Together, the TB treatment supporters and the regular outreach clinics are helping us eradicate tuberculosis in Papua New Guinea. Now, how can you help us to eradicate tuberculosis in Papua New Guinea? Hundred dollars will provide a bicycle to a treatment supporter, so they can travel from throughout their villages, checking on the patients and making sure that they take their treatment every day. Making sure that the patient gets treatment every day is a way of controlling tuberculosis. One treatment supporter can support four people at one time so that they're getting their treatment on time and not spreading the disease. $500 can train a healthcare worker on vaccine and cold chain management. Upskilled knowledge from this training will enable the health worker to be able to apply the right techniques in doing the outreach clinics. And if we are able to raise $20,000, this would help us cover the gaps in the transport costs that we have so that we'll be able to bring the remote, this life-saving remote clinics to the rural areas. If we continue this work, you and I can end tuberculosis in Papua New Guinea. And that will mean no mother will watch, will have to watch their children get sick and suffer from this horrible disease. I invite you to join in our fight to end tuberculosis in Papua New Guinea with a generous donation today. Thank you. Uh, Olive, thank you. And uh, it's really good to note that we weren't sure whether we could actually get this to work to Mike because we were having some troubles connecting with you. So it's so nice to see you and thank you so much for sharing in your story, but also in the work that is being done. Uh, again, if you have a question, we've got a little ask a question section down there. It's really great to hear from you and your thoughts and anything that you might like to hear from Olive. But I've got questions, Olive. Um, how do you think that the COVID-19 has impacted the operations in uh, PNG? The COVID-19 has greatly impacted um, the delivery of basic services um, within, within the urban set settings as well as the remote settings. So during the um, restrictions and the lockdowns, there were many women who would not be able to uh, reach to the new nearest health facility to get the help that they needed. Um, and if and many of the health facilities were closed because of the um, restrictions, there was shortage of medical supplies. And most of all, there were people who were on TB treatment who couldn't continue their treatment um, because they didn't have enough supplies. So it was, it really affected us. Um, when we were not prepared, the COVID came, so it was just like a threat to everything that we had. Um, some of our outreach clinics that we, we plan to have during that time, we wouldn't do them. Um, and then, um, yeah, so it, it did affect our normal routine um, outreach clinics. Yeah, I can imagine. It's been so complex. A question here from Angela um, saying, is the campaign to end tuberculosis in PNG shared by others like other organisations or the government? Yes, um, tuberculosis is a big problem, a major problem, public health problem in, in Papua New Guinea. So there is a campaign, organisations are working towards how we could control 
uh, tuberculosis, how we can end tuberculosis. Um, yes, so we're working very hard. Um, however, the villages, like I said, almost nine in 10 people live in the rural areas, which is quite hard to reach. So uh, if people have tuberculosis, they they quite hard to reach. And we know able to detect them as early as we can so that's why that's how we do the outreach clinics um, for the health facilities for those organizations that support health facilities it's like you expect the women to walk many many miles or many many so you know far away distance to reach to the nearest um, health facility and if they get there then you know they may have no men seen at all or they do not have the equipments there to be able to diagnose uh, tuberculosis but yes we do work very hard to try to eradicate tb in papua new guinea oh yeah it seems um incredible maybe one more question uh before we let you go it's so nice to see you this is from chris how difficult you're talking about getting out to those um, outreach uh, and and very remote spaces? How difficult is it to travel around PNG to get to those remote areas? So it's 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 a major problem. It's very difficult to reach out to those. Uh, villages which are very remote, the roads are rugged, you only need to get onto a four-wheel vehicle that you can go. So it's like where I come from, uh, women and children have to walk about um, about two hours by foot because there's no um, vehicles running around there. So they may have a child that's on the neck and one in the billum, you know, hanging on the mother's head. And if the mother is pregnant then she has three loads to carry and she works about two hours to get to the nearest health facility to um, get help and many of those clinics out in the communities are very you know basic where they're under resourced um, it's usually meant by a nurse aid so that there's not much uh, medical equipment available there and if she does not get help there she has to walk another an hour or two distance again to get to the major health facility so it's it's very difficult so oh. if if they have they are sick then they just stay home yeah uh it's incredible and again uh i love so much love for you today on the chat box sort of uh, thanking you for sharing your personal story, but also the great work that you're doing and the amount of energy and uh, passion that you're putting into this work. So thank you. And it's so nice to see you coming across uh, some you. very difficult uh, connections this afternoon. So thank you, Olive, and we wish you enormous luck to raise some money this afternoon, this evening, wherever you might be around the world, whatever time it is. Incredible stories, right, from three people making a real difference in the world. So let's see if we can work together, which is the enormous fun and satisfaction of what this is all about, uh, to fund what these life-changing projects are actually doing. Uh, here's how the pledging is going to work. We're going to invite an advocate for each program up onto the screen to tell you why they support Child Fund Australia and to kick off the pledging. Then we're going to open it up to all of you. If you would like to make a public pledge, enter your name and the amount you want to pledge in the chat box and I'm going to read it out. I have to say it is part of the power of this is doing this in such a, a lovely community and it feels really good uh, to be doing this as one no matter how much you're able to support, when we do it together, it has such power. Don't worry if I miss your pledge as well. We're going to go back through the chat box after the event and make sure that everyone's pledge is counted. But I'm good. I've been practising. And so hopefully I won't miss your pledge and we'll get to uh, read it out this evening. We're going to go through each program in the same order that they presented when we do our pledging. So save your pledges um, until we are collecting for that particular program. And then when we're done, we'll just do a really quick second round in case anyone would like to make any final pledges. All the pledges are tax deductible. Pledges start from just $100, but there's no upper limit. So don't be shy. If you've got a million dollars, 
we can deal with it. Um, you're going to also be inspiring other people to give to regardless and because of the amounts that you're able to pledge this evening. So it's all wonderful. But if you are shy, and we totally respect that, uh, we would and you prefer to give it privately, you can donate directly on the Child Fund Australia website or you can text your pledge to the number that you'll see posted in that chat room in just a moment. I'm excited to announce that a collection of Child's Fund's major donors and board members have contributed a combined $15,000 to the match funding pool. So that means you're going to see your pledge doubled on the screen up to $5,000 per program, which means $10,000 you get my drift and it feels good you put in 100 it's 200 a huge thank you a special thank you to Maureen Sheehan and Stephen Ramsey Chris Dwyer Michael Payne and Michael Rose for your ongoing support and it's great to see you in the chat uh, room this evening as well all right let's get started with the Timor Leste program the Navinia told us about the advocate for this program is Michael Rose, currently the Executive Director of the Institute for Global Development. Michael has a long history in international aid, having held the position of Chair for both the Child Fund Alliance and Child Fund Australia. In 2017, Michael was recognised as a member of the Order of Australia for his services to Indigenous communities and the legal profession. Welcome, Michael. Michael's finding his way through the, oh, there he is, he's coming. Hi, Hi. Jacinda, how are you? Hi, everybody. Um, thanks very much, Jacinda, and, and thanks everyone for uh, joining uh, this event this evening. And let me tell you why I'm really excited about supporting the program in Timor-Leste. Uh, I was on the board of uh, Child Fund Australia and also Child Fund Alliance for about 14 years, and I got to visit programs uh, child fund programs all around the world. And I think one of the first things that I learned when visiting those programs is that if you want to influence the health and safety and future of a child, then you also need to focus on the health and safety of that child's mother. I mean, it's, a, it's an obvious thing, I suppose, but it's, it's so important. And so much of what can happen um, in the life of a child in the communities that Child Fund serves um, is determined in those first few minutes of their lives. Um, if they don't survive, that's a tragedy. Um, but if their mother doesn't survive, that's a tragedy not just for the mother, but for the other children that that mother might have, for the community in which um, the mother lives. Um, the impact of a mother dying in childbirth is, 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 can be catastrophic. And so these programs, which Child Fund runs in Timor-Leste, um, they're really important. Um, they are important in the lives of children, communities, families. And they're not, at one, at one level, they're hard programs because they're in remote places. They're at the end of terrible roads. Um, babies don't always announce themselves very conveniently. They come in the middle of the night and they come in the middle of monsoons. And so at one, in, in one sense, the, the programs are hard to deliver. Um, but in another sense, they're a little bit straightforward. You know, they, they involve a clean environment, good hygiene, clean instruments, um, people who know what they're doing. And so um, a little bit of funding can go a long way in the delivery of these programs and in supporting people like Nanivia and her colleagues. Um, when you're thinking about whether to support this program, think about the multiplier effect of what you do. If, if a child survives, um, that changes the life of that child and it changes the life of the community in which that child grows. Um, if a mother doesn't die in childbirth, if a mother survives or if a mother is not injured, um, that affects not just her life and the life of the child that's born um, on that occasion, it affects the life of all her, her other children. And it affects their lives and the contributions that they make to their communities over their lifetime. So $100 that you spend now might change the lives of five or six people uh, and the community in which they live 
over the course of their life. So a very small amount for us becomes a very significant contribution to the lives and the health and the safety and the future happiness of the children that I know we all care about. So with that in mind, uh, I'm really happy to start the pledging with $500 for Nanivia and her team, conscious that um, that gets doubled by the, uh, the, very, the great generosity of others. So thanks very much, Jacinta, and um, everybody donate fast and donate quickly. <laughs> and ferociously, Michael, that's the way to go. <laughs> uh, what a great start. We've already, as you see there, uh, doubled that pledge from Michael to $1,000, and you'll see that happen right up until we reach the total of 10000 So let's enjoy ourselves. Let's ensure that you've charged your glasses, you're having a lovely afternoon, evening, wherever you might be around the world, and let's do this. Angela Flynn, uh, Finn, I should say, got off nice and early and says, I pledged $50 to help mums and bubs. Thank you very much. Christine Jack, $200 for each country. Christine, if you could pop back when we're raising money for Kenya, that would be wonderful. And then again, PNG, we'd really appreciate it to help us kind of keep track of everything. We're doing Timor Leste at the moment, and we're very excited uh, to continue that. Di Mason, $100. Thank you, Di. Uh, Marina Ward has also said, I would like to pledge $100. Marina, thank you very, very much. Chris, $100. Thank you for that. Karen Ford, $100. And uh, lots of joy. Cassandra, we, I don't know if it's frozen for everyone, hopefully not. Nina um, has said $200, please, for her. Danielle Martin, $25. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, Di Vukalik, $300 for Timor. Mary Latham, $200. It's coming through thick and fast. And look at how wonderful already, $3,750. Sarah Hunt, $150. Thank you very much. And a good reminder, if you can hear me, but we're frozen, just give us a refresh and pop back in. Um, wonderful to see the great support that's already coming in. Uh, Catherine said, this is truly moving. Thank you, everyone. Di, Marina, Chris, superstars. And indeed, this feels good when we do this together. Jane Alfred, $100 for each. So we'll do that in a minute, but we'll take that for Timor Leste at the moment from Jane. Thank you very, very much. Nuri, $100. Thank you, Nuri. Lynn Joseph, $200. Bang, it's $400, which is very excited. Um, Nick has said $100. Thank you very much. Belinda Lucas, $100. Thank you so much. Cormac Champion says $100 please. David Shortland, $100. Um, and as Naomi's mentioning, don't worry if I've missed your pledge, we're going to make sure it gets added, but hopefully I won't. Dan Charvin, $250. Thank you. Richard Moore, great to see you. Thank you very much. $350. Chris Dreyer has just texted. He wants to help two villages with $500, which means a thousand which is very exciting, but he would like someone to match him. Is anyone out there ready to go head to head with Chris Dwyer and say, yeah, I've got $500 that I would love to put toward this. Rob Irving, Irving sorry, Rob, has said $100 in honour of a dear late sister who suffered multiple pregnancy losses. Rob, our love goes to you and thank you very much for that. John Chancellor says $100, thank you very much. This is wonderful, $8,250 raised so far. In just a matter of minutes, let's see what we can do. The Delta First Team would like to also pledge $100 to each, but the Delta First Team, come back and tell us about Kenya and about PNG in a moment as well. Thank you very much for that. Tracy Ewan, $100, thank you very. And Joe Brennan says, I'm going to match you, Chris Dwyer. Thank you for supporting Child Fund. So for Joe, that's $500. Bang, just like that, $9,650. Uh, Callie Beaumont, thank you very much, $100. That's brilliant. Lots of joy coming through. Uh, Vic Chowdhury, $200. Thank you very much. And that takes us to just over uh, $10,000. Housley Communications, $1,000. That's from John and Lara. That'll be for each. So we'll come to those in a moment. Hopefully, John and Lara, you can stick with us and pledge those uh, amounts when we get to them. But incredible uh, that that $1,000 
now takes us to $11,125. Chris is so impressed, says Julie, that he's going to throw in another $1,000. Wow, in capital letters to uh, for Chris there. Thank you, Chris. $12,125 has been raised thus far, which is very, very exciting. I do get, I get a sore head from smiling so broadly. Uh, but you know what? I will endure the pain of joy when it comes like that. So much joy coming through the, the uh, chat room. Excitement. Uh, housing communication says, Joe, good work. And uh, to John and Laura, Lara, thank you very much. Di Robinson, $100. Thank you very much, Di. Uh, Simon says, I'm so sorry, but I have to leave. I'd love to pledge $100 for each of the three projects. Simon, thank you so much. And so sorry that we can't uh, keep you here for the rest of the night, but we really appreciate it. And hopefully we can make a note. I'm sure we can. Uh, someone has said, that's okay. It's done. Thank you so much. Wonderful. And have a lovely night, Simon. Thank you for joining us. Uh, $12,325 is what we have raised for Timor Leste at this point. Nenevia, we heard from earlier with her incredible story. Angela Finn is feeling very pumped about uh, the way that uh, we have contributed thus far. $12,325 is a wonderful start. Wondering if there's any more in your back pocket. Uh, we will come around for a, a second round with each of our um, projects um, after we do our first, but it is wonderful to uh, get the excitement, $12,325 raised. Um, Sayed El Kazan, $500. Thank you so much. Uh, and in Swahili, Asante, Sana. Thank you, Awino. That is beautiful. Thanks a lot in Swahili. How lovely to have that. I've just had another text from Chris. How good is Chris? He likes round numbers, so we'll donate <laughs> another $675 to round it up. I love a rounder upper, as does Julie. Julie has a difficult time with uncomfortable numbers. And so we say, thank you, Chris. So wonderful to have that support tonight. $13,500 is very good. Can it be any better is the question. Uh, that I pose to you on this Thursday night, so close to Christmas. Who needs presents? Mm -mm. We need the rest of the world to ensure that there is equity in our life experience. This is how we do it. $13,500 thus far has raised for the brilliant work that Nivea told us about earlier this evening. Um, <laughs> Julie says, I like round numbers and lots of zeros. Yes, we do. Um, and it's so good. $13,500 is incredible and so exciting. Before I move on, just making sure that there's not some more that we'd like to contribute to the wonderful program um, here. Timor Leste, $13,500 thus far. And we know, thank you. Very good. It's so exciting. Isn't it nice? It feels like every time this feels like. We are actually here together as a community uh, making a difference and how incredible that even in the year that has been this one, so complex and difficult right around the world, that we have still been able to contribute and make sure that uh, that part of our life and the way that we need to be giving does not stop. So thank you. All right, well, that feels pretty good. $13,500. Congratulations. What a great way to start. Margaret Sheehan says $250. Margaret, thank you very much. That'll be added right now in the background. We'll see that when we uh, pop that up again in just a moment. All right. Let us raise some funds for Chege's Kenya, Kenyan program. The advocate for this program is Nelson Opan. Nelson is a former sponsored child who is now a communications and partnerships manager. Nelson grew up in Kisumu and both lost both his parents at a young age. But with the support of Child Fund and his extended family, Nelson was able to complete both primary and secondary school and pursue a career in a field he was passionate about. While the odds were st stacked against him in childhood, 
Nelson's personal determination and drive allowed him to take advantage of the opportunities which came his way. Thankful for the support of his sponsors, Nelson is now a firm believer that in giving, we receive. Nelson, it is so nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. Hi, everyone. Thank you. It's nice to join you here today. My name is Nelson, and I'm from Sierra County in Western Kenya. Life was so challenging when I became an orphan uh, at lose, after losing both my parents. I had a chance to meet my children with siblings who to live with us two child fund sponsorship and care, new doors of hope were opened for me. I completed 12 years of basic education, never having to worry about school fees, and in the process also receiving food from school. Today, I am a leader and a professional with a stable career in communications, and also a proud husband and father to two lovely boys. As a beneficiary of charity, I have made it a personal commitment to advocate for and support investment in the development of young people to give them the life-changing opportunity like the one I had. As we've heard from Chege, in Kenya today, many children are struggling to get food, to get clothes, to access medical care, and even a decent education. As a living testimony of Child Fund's impact, I'm certain that with your support they can change more lives just like they did for me i'm excited therefore to begin this pledging session with uh, 500 dollars from florine in australia who's also currently sponsoring a child in kenya thank you all for your generosity and i really hope that you can join me in pledging even more thank you oh thank you nelson how exciting that we could hear your story. And thank you so much for sharing it with us and for being with us tonight. Um, as a winner says, oh, Nelson, hearing your story always warms our hearts and gives us the reason to keep working with children all over the country. Incredible. So bang, here we are at $1,000 straight away after hearing the wonderful and powerful words of Chege earlier in the evening. Um, it's just so wonderful to also see Nelson tonight as well. So let's go. If you would like to pledge your support, um, please join us right now and we'll add it to that very, very wonderful beginning. Julie says, I left my heart in Kenya 15 years ago. I will pledge $100 to buy a family food for a month. Will people join me in funding another 11 months? That would be 11 supports of that, of that $100. Mary Latham says $200, please, for Kenya. Thank you, Mary, very much. You are awesome, Nelson, says Angela. I pledge $100. Thank you very much, Angela. Um, on behalf of my four teenage girls watching tonight who love listening to Nelson for $100. Thank you, Belinda, and your wonderful teenage girls who are joining us tonight. It's really great to have you. Nina says $200, please. And we say thank you very much, Nina. Julie has put out the, the challenge. If you'd like to meet her uh, there, David says, yes, I will, $100. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. Uh, Carla as well, uh, there is a link for you if you would like to go on. Uh, and lots of love and support there, $2,600. Michaela Cronin, who is on the board of Child Fund, will donate $1,000, but she would really like a match in any form. Thank you so much. That's incredible. Candy Shaven says $250. Uh, Carla, I pledge $50 for each program. Carla, that would be great. And if you can pledge when we get to the Papua New Guinea part of it, that would be wonderful. Uh, we'll take your $50 pledge right now for Kenya. John Tangi, $100. Thank you very much, John. How exciting. Thank you, Carla. John Chancellor as well, $100. Thank you. I do believe somehow we must be accruing some support here for Julie. Uh, Marina Ward, $100. Thank you very much, Marina. Kelly Beaumont, $100. For Kenya, Di Vakelic, $200. Thank you, Di. $200 from Christine J. And look at that, already $6,800 is what we have raised this evening. Thanks, Christine Jack. Di Vakelic, we said $100. Oh, is that another amount? Incredible. Thank you. Um, and Nelson, it's so nice to know that Nelson's there saying thank you for your generosity. It's lovely to have you 
uh, somewhere in that ether, Nelson joining us tonight. And Catherine is very excited. We've raised already just like that $7,000. We heard from Chege how much that money, how far donations go in terms of uh, ensuring that families have autonomy and um, empowerment in the way that that money is spent. Darby says $100 again from the Delta First fundraising team. What a good crew you are, Delta First. Thank you very much. Jeffrey Y, $100. And then just like that, bang, it doubles on the screen, $7,400. Very exciting, $7,400, uh, which will go an enormous way. But of course, more money that we can raise, the further this will go. Florine Simon has texted that she will pledge $500 to support five households for a month. Justin Bevan, $500, which becomes 1000 because of the doubling. Thank you very much, Justin. Delta First, you are a godsend. Absolutely. Karen Ford, thank you very much, $100. Now, Angela says, Joe, my gorgeous hubby from Bent and Curved Glass just said, I pledge $200 to help feed families. Thank you very much, Joe. And lovely to know that you're in the background there being inspired to join in. Great to have your company. Margaret Sheehan, $250. Thank you, Margaret. And Rob Irving says $100 with a challenge to match from everyone who has also lived in Africa. Uh, Richard Moore, Nelson, if you're there, very inspired is Richard Moore by your story. Thank you very much for sharing it tonight. $300 from Richard Moore. Um, and it's nearly 3 a.m. Hi, Morgan, in the US. But I've so enjoyed every minute of this event so far. Thank you, Morgan. How nice to know that you're over there. It's quite shh. It needs to be quiet. Thank you all to the presenters and to the Child Fund Australia. I pledge $100 uh, American, which I'm sure will work out in some way for Kenya. Thank you very much, Morgan. Uh, wow, Florin, $500 to support five households. So that's just a reflection. That's not an addition to that. Thank you very much. Ah, $10,750 so far is where we are. And Awino has said, yes, we're very grateful that Morgan is awake at three o'clock in the morning. It's kind of good, isn't it? You can see here that we're wide awake here in Australia um, and we've been over in Kenya. They're wild awake over there. Chege is here uh, and making a very important point that uh, it's young girls who get uh, disproportionately impacted uh, by any of the issues that we spoke about this evening. Chege says that our girls will resume schooling once school is reopened is such an important part in the cycle that we hear so much about. Angela Finn uh, is excited, brilliant, uh, and lots of help. Michaela Cronin will pledge another $250 to round it up, woman after my own heart. We do love a round up. We love a round up. $11,000, which has taken us to that. Uh, Chege in Swahili Asante Sana from to Morgan. Uh, I, hopefully I'm vaguely correct in my pronunciation this evening. Thank you for your patience and your graciousness. Uh, <laughs> so good. $11,000 is what we have been able to do so far. And it is so much fun. Uh, hopefully wherever you are joining us around the world, you're enjoying being together in this uh, giving community that, uh, that we are joined with right now for Child Fund Australia, raising money for the incredible work that Chege spoke to us about earlier in the evening and how important this work is to ensure that we break cycles. Florence Simon will fund another five households with another $500, such a special gift at Christmas. Kay Wilson has said, to that I would love to add $1,000 which just takes us immediately, thank you, Kay Wilson, so much, to $12,500. Um, it's incredible to have this uh, uh, community raising money. And that's right, as we are heading toward Christmas, it is a time to reflect on what is, what are we doing? You know, how are we choosing to spend our lives and our, uh, our money in the way that we choose for the work that is being done in our name right around the world. $12,500 for uh, the wonderful story that we heard from Nelson and for Chege. Simon Swarbrick, $150. Thank you, Simon. And uh, 
that takes us to $12,650. On this Thursday evening, wherever you might be, Marilyn Jandra, $150. Thank you very much, $12,800. Uh, and again, just so nice to be together doing this tonight. What else would you be doing? TV? No. Sit around and hang out together. I love Joe, Angela's husband, who's also said, I want to give another $250. Joe, I don't want to wake up Morgan, but Joe, that's brilliant. Lovely to have you here. Uh, good marriage, Angela. Angela and Joe, I'm going to give you a um, a very good, you know, congratulations on that union. Good work. <laughs> yes, better than Netflix is what Julia said. Thank you. It is. It's like our own little um, drama, our show. Group marketing services have said, well, what about $500 from us? And we say, thank you so much. Angela Finn has just told everyone that she loves Joe. Isn't that good? $13,550. I can see Julie twitching uh, because it's slightly uneven. It's a wonderful amount of money. I wonder um, how we could perhaps, Michael Rose, thank you. Oh, from Ella Rose, $200. Thank you, Ella. I'm sure there's something wonderful in the Rose family situation that we have there. I'm not sure of the relationship, but I'm very excited. Thank you very much, Ella. $13,750 has been raised, uh, as we said. Uh, wonderful Nelson and Chege joining us all the way from Kenya this afternoon, this evening. Florence Simon has said, uh, agrees, another 250 if we can get a match which takes us to $14,000, which we do love. But if anyone out there is feeling matchy, you know, it's good to match. Matching is great. Everyone says so. You know, let's not match. Let's match. Um, Gath Mulligan, what a legend, has said, I'm going to match you, uh, Florence and Simon. And then uh, from one Joe to another Joe, Joe Brennan has said, I'm going to throw down 250 as well, which takes us to $14,500. Chege is saying, on behalf of our children, sending our love for all of you. Beautiful. $14,500. It's a lovely amount. Zeros. I know that makes Julie happy. I'm not pushing it. I'm just wondering. Uh, but thank you so much. So nice one, Cap. Oh, that's not another match, though, is it? Is that, do we have another match? Um, gotta love Joe's. It is true, Belinda. Joe's a very strong experience tonight, isn't it? The Joe name is is doing really well. Uh, I'm I'm also liking Florin too. I've got to say, um, doing very very well. Okay, remember, fifteen thousand will help fifteen hundred households. Another five hundred from the amazing Michaela. So we did get it. So we got to $15,000. Who will be Santa tonight? Well, it's obviously Joe, Angela. That's definitely what's going on. <laughs> and Zawino says, oh, oh, oh. Very, very good. How exciting. $15,000. And Nelson has said, wow. And I just really am happy to see that Nelson is excited because that makes me so happy this evening. Wonderful. $15,000 has been raised. Congratulations. So good. All right. Well, this just gets more fun. How much fun is this? Who would watch TV when you can hang out and uh, enjoy the wonderful spoils of what it means to when we work together? All right. Let us now go and raise some money for the wonderful work that we heard about from Olive. Okay. Uh, the Olive spoke about earlier. Let's invite their advocate, Joe Brennan, one of the strong Joes. I'm so excited to see what Joe Brennan looks like on the screen to share her message of support. Joe is currently the Chief Operating Officer of Aware Super and has served for six years on Child Funds Board. Joe has over 25 years of executive leadership experience working across a diverse range of sectors, including corporate and non and not-for-profit organisations. Joe has visited Child Funds operations in Papua New Guinea, seeing the work done to support children and communities living in some of the country's most remote rural villages. It's one of the Joes. Hi, Joe. <laughs> Hello, great to meet you, Jacinta. And uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. And I agree, it is really fantastic to be together tonight um, and coming together to do, um, do work to really make a difference. 
And uh, I want to say, Olive, thank you for such a powerful presentation. And as Jacinta said, my name's Jo Brennan and I've had a long association with Child Fund and I've been a member of the board since 2014. And I took myself to PNG in 2017 to see the work of Child Fund in a country that is really characterised by deep need, immense challenge and very warm hearts. So we went out on my first day together and it was over 30 degrees and it was at least 100% humidity and the air was completely still. And looking out as far as we could see in every direction was amazing mountains covered in dense, lush, green jungle. There were five of us going out in the car and I was so grateful for that occasional breath of chilled, air-conditioned air as we made our way out of Moresby. The road was very rough and we were seesawing in our car, dodging potholes the size of my mini at home, and we were going off-road many times. Now, I'm from South Australia and out in the bush originally, and so I know bad roads, but this was something else, and this was the dry season, and it gives you just a small sense of how challenging it is to reach people in these remote areas. It took us over two hours to cover 80 kilometres. And parts of this district that Olive spoke of are just so truly remote. Now, at last, we broke into the town and we found the, the Kwikala Medical Centre that's supported by Child Fund. And what we saw there was breathtaking. Children and mothers and the elderly were sitting quietly on the ground, waiting to access the most basic of services to be tested for TB. The need for more support is absolute. The medical staff told us of the distress they felt in having to turn people away. It was clear that Olive's team were making a huge difference, but we needed more. Access to healthcare in PNG is extremely limited. It's distressing and distressingly basic in a country that is one of our nearest neighbours. It's about three hours flying time away from us. It continues to amaze me that children in PNG, our neighbour, are dying from tuberculosis when we have a vaccine. And as Olive told us, it's preventable. I know from my visit that Olive and the team will be working tirelessly to make a difference and to ensure that the money we send in support tonight will go to helping those people who were sitting outside the medical centre waiting for their support. There is much that needs to be done and there is much that must be done. So please be neighbourly, support PNG tonight and help Olive and the team make a difference. I am really proud to be part of Child Fund and to be supporting tonight. And I hope to encourage you with my opening bid of $500. Thank you, Jacinta, and thank you to everybody who has joined us tonight. Love it, Joe. Very good. Thank you so much for kicking that off and thank you for your words. $1,000 is where we are. Bang like that. And already uh, down here, we can see that Michael Rose is, is going on the Joe thing and saying, go the Joes. $500 from Joe D'Antonio and love to my friends from Child Fund Korea. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Uh, that already takes us to $2,000. Amy Lewine. Lemoyne, I should say, $200. Thank you very much. Chris Dwyer will pledge $2,000 to buy 200 bikes for treatment support workers in PNG, but he would like five people to buy five bikes. That's $100 each, which is a wonderful, incredible contribution. And Chris, you can see here, Julie, let him know that it just, you know, went to an enormous amount of doubling with that match funding right now at $6,400. Cassandra says, I'll buy all five bikes, Chris. Cassandra, 
thank you very, very much. That's $500 from Cassandra. That's great. Julie says, I'm actually going to buy one though anyway for my goddaughter for Christmas, $100 from Julie. $100 because Olive Oa inspires me every day. Larissa, thank you very much. That's a wonderful thing. Hopefully Olive is still there with us somewhere. Um, Joe's $200. Oh, sorry. That's nothing. David's just being grateful and that's lovely. Thank you, David. Mary Latham, $200. And thank you, Mary, for uh, sticking around and putting those pledges in. Really appreciate it. Tim says, I'm going to buy a bike, $100 from Tim Kerr. Thank you, Tim. Wonderful. Nina, uh, $200. Thank you. Belinda, $100 from our crew, crew here too. Thank you, Belinda. That's already taken us to $9 thousand um, dollars here from Angela Finn okay I'm in another hundred dollars from both Ange and Joe Joe's walked from being back in the kitchen he's now sitting glued to this screen great to have you Sarah Hunt a hundred and fifty dollars thank you Sarah wonderful did I say die Mason a hundred dollars go the bikes thank you so much uh, Housley Communications, $1,000. Incredible. Thank you. That takes us to $10,850. Dan Shavin, $250. Margaret Sheehan, $250 for babies. Thank you so much. Kelly Beaumont, oh, yes. Is that right? That'll be later. Uh, Kelly Beaumont, $100 for PNG. Thank you. Uh, it's Fast and Furious, isn't it? Lynn Joseph, $100. Thank you very much. Tracy, $100. Thank you. Whoever the PNG team needs is $200 from Christine J. And Julie says, it gives me great pleasure to pledge for Michael Rose, who will buy another five bikes with $500. Michael, thank you so much. $12,350. And the wonderful die here, $200. Michael Rose has also uh, done another contribution here, $300 from the Bike Boys, Hugo, Felix and Rocco. The best. Thank you so much. Well done, Hugo, Felix and Rocco. That is really, really exciting. $50 from my family to our PNG family, says Carla. Beta and Lynette, $200. Thank you very much. That takes us to $13,100 and my head is hurting from smiling so much. So good to have you uh, joining us everywhere, wherever you're coming to us from. I hope all of <laughs> the bike boys sound really cool, don't they, says Joe Brennan. Yes, I love the bike boys. $13,100 is what we have raised and hopefully Olive is still with us being able to celebrate and enjoy the support and love that is coming through. Rob Irving, $100. Rob and Maria Irving, both of us have had TB. Incredible. And thank you very much, Rob, for uh, for your contribution. Marina Ward, $100. Thank you very much. $300 from Vikram and our family. Thank you very much. Group marketing services are the best. $500. Thank you very much. That takes us to $14,100, which is just incredible. Uh, Martin R says $100, please. Uh, and it's so exciting. Oh, Olive is there. Olive is there. Great. So good to see you. Uh, $14,200. Wacko GMS, you are, f oh, hang on. Nothing. Shh. I won't say that. That's just a lot of joy. Uh, I guess. Um, slightly confusing but that's okay $14,200 is where we are at for the work that we heard that Olive is so passionate about Chris Dreyer would like to train a health worker with another $500 but he would like someone or a family to sponsor another health worker in PNG any matches Chris Dwyer, you're inspiring with your pledges that takes us to $14,000 so good. Lots of love coming through for you, Olive. Uh, and Chege saying an inspiring intervention of buying bicycles. I can bear testimony of their impact on community development. I'll match Chris's $500, said Richard Moore. Richard Moore, thank you so much. Incredible. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Richard. That takes us to $15,200 raised just like that when we hang out together on a Thursday night incredible um and i'm so happy to know that olive is here also participating and enjoying 
what is being done. Thank you so much. $15,200 raised thus far for that very important and also complex and difficult work that is being done to ensure access to much needed support. And Chris, Chris Dwyer, Chris will match your match, Richard, with another $500. <laughs> I love the match of the match. It's a great way to go. That takes us to $15,700, which is wonderful. Uh, I know Julie's having a little twitch right now as $15,700 is really good. $800 in the names of the six Sheehan and the two Ramsey sisters. What a good team you are. Thank you, Maureen Sheehan, uh, for that is incredible. $800. Thank you. And what a good way to do it as a family. $16,500 is being raised for PNG, the project that we heard Olive speak to us about and how wonderful it was uh, that the connection worked so that we could see Olive and hear her wonderful, wonderful uh, project and the work and, and her own life experience. Ah, uh, yes, Chege uh, is sharing in the joy that it is to have this happening. Joe Brennan says, love the Sheen family. I think we all do. Sheenan, Sheenan. Uh, Delta First back again with another $100 from the fundraising team. How good is it to have a fundraising team? Like seriously, is there anything better to do with your time? Michael Rose, I'm feeling very bad pledging your money, but another $500 from the Rose family. Michael Rose, I hope you're enjoying how wonderful uh, it is thank you so much seventeen thousand one hundred dollars incredible contribution from the rose family thank you very much uh lots and lots of love coming through for it's so much fun isn't it we i feel like we are somehow together somehow seventeen thousand one hundred dollars raised thus far for the incredible work uh, that olive spoke to us about moments ago okay are we there at this point we're going to go around for a really quick second round just to ensure that uh, we have emptied our pockets this evening so much fun incredible what we will do is what we have done uh, throughout the whole evening let's have a look at what we've actually got ah a beautiful uh, increase throughout the the night it's not over though $13,750. Um, hang on. So, Joe says, hi, it's Ian here. Joe's hubby. Hi, Ian. How are you? I want to pledge $750 to support Olive's amazing work. So let's put it there. But let us now go in order of uh, the projects that we heard about this evening in the same way that we did before. Thank you, Ian. And thank you, Joe. Beautiful. Let's start now with uh, the Timor-Leste program. We heard Nanivia speak to us about earlier in the evening, uh, some really important work for the mothers and children. Uh, so $13,750, <laughs> John loves Ian, but let us concentrate. Timor-Leste is where we will raise money for right now. If there's anything extra, it's an incredible uh, contribution at $13,750 thus far. Uh, but is there any more, do you think, in the way that maybe we could raise for, again, uh, the incredible uh, work? We're looking at Timor Leste at the moment, $13,750. Even a little roundy McRound up would be wonderful. Chris Dwyer is like Santa Claus. He will pledge another $1,000 to support two villages. Chris Dwyer, we need a statue for Chris Dwyer today. Thank you very, very much for your enormous contribution throughout the entire evening and to take uh, the contribution to Timor Leste to $14,750. Okay, so Joyce, sorry, I made a mistake. Add another $825 so that so that's so a total of $1,825. I hope someone understands. I just love it. I'm just not clear. Okay, $15,575. Carla says, 
$50 for Timor Leste, which is brilliant. Thank you very much, Carla. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Julie. Whatever happened there was really good. I just couldn't work out the maths of it. Nina says $100. Thank you, Nina. 15,725. Some very awkward numbers that we're very, we're okay with. But um, if there's any way that we could, you know, sort those out, that would be lovely. $15,725 is a really wonderful outcome. I'll move on in just a moment. But if you have any uh, money, Rose family, another $1,000. Thank you. Incredible. So grateful. Oh, $16,725. It takes our uh, total to 49575 which is really good. But do we want to round it up? I'm just asking. That's all. Just a really quick question around even numbers. Um, Carla says, I'm so proud to be a child sponsor of this wonderful program. Thank you for all your amazing work. Really good. Before I move off to more Estate, I'm just wondering, just a little question on that. Um, very good. Very happy. 16725 Okay. I will move on. I'm just double checking that there isn't any kind of rounding up situation that we might be able to do at this point. Okay. Thank you, everybody. That's a wonderful outcome. Jacinta, this is TFN's 20th virtual event of 2020, and we have loved finishing out the year with child funds. So another hundred dollars from me into my from my team. Julie, that's so good. $16,825. All right, I'm going to say $100 from me, which takes us to $16,925 just to really um, push home the point that it would be really easy to add on a little bit of extra to take us to $17,000 perhaps. Um, that i just wondering. And now... <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Hunt, you're very good. Thank you very much. $75. Thank you. $17,000 in total for Timo Leste. I'm so excited. I can feel Namibia joining us and being very excited about that. Okay. Um, let us go. Sarah Hunt, you are special. Sarah, a lot of love for that. That was a really good moment. Let's go, uh, Chege and the work that we heard uh, from him this evening. Also, hello, Nelson, wherever you might be joining us. And let's raise some money now for the Kenyan program, uh, the very important one. We heard about the incredible complexity that is being faced by so many families at the moment and how much and how far contributions uh, will go toward helping families and ensure that children are returning to school. Kay Wilson at that, oh, okay, hang on. Okay, so $1,000 from Kay Wilson to Timor. Can you put that one on? And then we'll go to PNG in a moment. But we're just currently on the Kenyan. But thank you so much, Kay Wilson. Very, very good. I'm whispering. I shouldn't have to, but Morgan is asleep in the US right now. $18,000. Okay, so for the Kenyan program, we heard from uh, Chege earlier. Michaela Cronin, another $250 for Chege. Thank you very much, Michaela. 15,250 bucks. What a good way for us to lead in to um, Christmas. Kenya was where we're raising money at the moment. Just very quickly, we won't spend too long, but so wonderful uh, to see the total amount raised as well. Very exciting. $15,250 this evening. Florin Simon has texted that she will match with another $250. Can you please tell her, Julie, that we're very fond of Florin this after, this evening, wherever we are in time-wise. And Mr. Rose, another $1,500. Holy wowzers is exactly the right word. <laughs> Morgan is still awake. It must be a little bit but good, Morgan. Stay with us. 20 minutes past three, you'll go back to sleep. And this is good. You'll wake up thinking it was a dream. And it wasn't. $17,000. Um, Chege says, putting food on the table will turn around the lives of the vulnerable children. So good. And lots of love for Michael Rose this afternoon, this evening. Why do I keep saying this afternoon? It's And it's the morning in, in America. $17,000. I'll hold on for one more moment. 
if there's any more that you would like to contribute there, we are grateful in the extreme. Thank you. How good is this? I'm vibed on life this evening. Thank you for your goodness. All right. Congratulations. $17,000 raised for the enormous work happening in Kenya to ensure that families find their way through to having food on the table. Okay, we have an anonymous donation of $500, which is a beautiful thing. And uh, Florin Simon, another $250. Awesome. So good. Thank you, Angela. Uh, thanks, Joe, in there as well. That takes us. Did we get that one? Uh, $250 extra from Florin Simon. I don't know if that one was added on to Kenya at the moment. Not sure. Anyway, I trust you. Very, very, very good. Uh, okay, very good. All right, let us move now to um, Papua New Guinea, PNG, and the work that we heard from Olive fighting tuberculosis uh, right across into some very, very difficult areas to get into. We were buying bikes before to ensure that healthcare workers could find their way across some really rugged terrain. But there's so many ways that this money will be used. $18,850 is what we have raised. I do remember that we had that other wonderful contribution before. Have we added that one in? I wonder. Um, we did hear from, I'm just going back. Do I need to? You'll know what we're doing. I'm just talking into the abyss, but I feel like I'm talking directly to you. $18,850. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much is what we have raised. Incredible. If there's any small amount, big amount that you have that you would like to contribute to the work that is being done in PNG, um, that would be great. Thank you. Chris Dwyer really wants to get this to $20,000. Chris which is the target. So another $1,000 from Chris. Chris, thank you, thank you, thank you. Taking us to 19,850 bucks, which is so close to the $20,000 amount that uh, I know will be incredibly, look, I'm, you know, it's time to, okay, hang on. And a mystery donation, text it in, $500. Thank you so much to the anonymous donation that just came in which has tipped us over the edge, $20,350 is what we've done tonight. Look at what we've done. Oh, so excited. And Belinda, you're right, Chris Dwyer is a total legend according to the crew here. Very, very, very excited. Uh, good neighbours, says Joe Brennan of Chris Dwyer. $20,350. Naomi says, wait for it. We're waiting. We're waiting. Are we waiting? I'm not sure. What's happening? $20,350. Morgan, stay awake. We've still got just a couple of moments. Okay, we've just some reason. Okay, just received some great news. We've had a pledge of $10,000 from Aaron. And we are so excited to announce that the company he works for will match his pledge, making it a total of $20,000 that will go towards all three countries. Oh, how did that happen? <laughs> that is incredible. <laughs> ah, ah, wow. I'm, I'm basically <laughs> making all the sounds. Awina says, how can this be? Am I dreaming? No, nor are you, Morgan. Uh, Carla's crying. I'm crying. What an incredible thing that just happened. I'm glad we waited and watched and wondered. Ah, oh, this is so emotional, isn't it? I do feel like crying. <laughs> and it's so lovely to have um, the wonderful people who spoke to us, Nanivia, Olive and uh, Chege are uh, still here with us and celebrating, of course, watching and feeling the <laughs> Olive was saying, I can't believe this, so amazing, I'm out of words. Olive, you just relax, please. Ah, uh, so, whew, what do you do with that? I'm here by myself. <laughs> I need to cuddle someone. Linda's squealing and is clapping. 
Ah, Cassandra says, well, well now we've got strange numbers. <laughs> I don't even know if we care anymore. Do we care? If we do care, I'm not sure how we care. Uh, Timor Leste, twenty four thousand six hundred and sixty six dollars. Oh, Aaron, Kenya, twenty four thousand one hundred and sixty six dollars. Nelson has uh, done a very appropriate emoji of a, a champagne bottle, and PNG, twenty seven thousand and sixteen dollars. Strange numbers. We welcome them. Like, don't we? That is just so emotional. Ah, oh, and we know it's so true. 2020 was terrible. And then there is this flip side of beauty and generosity and kindness and all the things that make us who we are as a community of people and humans across the world. Ah, oh, okay. I, I, I guess that's where we are. Um, hang on, we have more details for that last minute donation. Naomi, I feel like we need to give you the microphone. What's happening? Stephen's happy. Are we waiting? I feel like I trust Naomi with her spoiler alerts telling us that she's about to tell us something more. Who knew that that was about to happen? I'm sorry if I'm narrating this story like a wild woman, but what an experience. Naomi's got more details. Okay, a massive clap for Aaron Moyes and the company he works for, IMC Foundation. <sighs> Just let us uh, feel that. It is incredible. What incredible generosity from our whole child fund. Thank you. Um, this one from Joe says $152. Where are you? Hang on. I need a round number. John says 334 to Timor. 834 to Kenya from the Housley uh, comms. You're so good. Uh, and Joe has gone 152. So I guess that's for PNG, Joe. Correct Mundo, which is good. Not the best maths you've ever done, Joe, but it's good. <laughs> Nonetheless. So beautiful. Thank you, John, for doing that as well. $25,000. I'm so emotional. Oh, $25,000 for Kenya. And um, we're at $27,168 for PNG. And really um, incredible. Okay. I think there we are. Oh, I'm going to have to have a lie down. This is just too much. Morgan, luckily, is actually in bed, so she doesn't need to do anything. Uh, thank you to the Joes. It's not my not my speech to make. But thank you so much for demonstrating. Uh, yes, <laughs> we should hear from Margaret right now. Oh, dear. Okay. Um, who's going to come back up and share with us what impact your support will have on Child Fund Australia and these three important projects. Margaret. Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. How exciting. I've run back into my office so that I can report from here, but I've been out with the, the other, other group. But really our aim tonight was to raise some money for these projects, but it was also to assist um, all of our generous supporters to understand and feel a little bit closer to the work that we do. And I think for you to be confident that the money that you invest is doing good work for children. And I really hope that that's been one of the outcomes for tonight because I think the presentations were wonderful and gave us that insight. And clearly they gave us so much insight because people have been so generous. Um, perhaps this festive fundraiser can become an annual event. We really did this online because of um, COVID-19. And I hope if we were to do it next year, we'd have more people coming together. But that doesn't mean that we can't continue to do something like this. Um, thanks, Chege, Olive, and Nanivia for joining us tonight and sharing your invaluable insights and for revving up the crowd. Um, and it was really great to hear from our advocates, kind of Joe and Michael and Nelson. It's really important not only that we have good people that work for us, but we have people that believe in us and um, our advocates have really believed in us. And clearly tonight I've seen how much our supporters believe in us and and I have to say how much our staff believe in us. Many donations tonight also came from Child Fund staff and I think that's real testament to 
um, not only how they believe in the work, but what good people that, that we have, as well as all the wonderful supporters. Uh, my script said the $15,000 we raised for, but now I delightfully crossed out and said the $25,000 that we raised for Kenya can help not 1,500 families, but 2,700 families um, to, to provide nutritious food for their children. And in Papua New Guinea, the $27,000 can help our outreach clinics continue to tackle TB. But not only do we tackle TB, we also do outreach work that looks at maternal child health and that, that, that accesses lots of things. Um, and in Timor-Leste, the $25,000 um, will allow our maternal child health programs to run more smoothly and um, in, for longer and in bigger ways. So we really did achieve something special tonight. I hoped that we would, and I think that we did. And I think that the, the, the event has demonstrated that you can make a difference and that we do make a difference. Um, I've always believed that um, as a global citizen of the world that I share some responsibility for those who have less. And I felt absolutely warm tonight by watching what happened and feeling like I was in such good company with people who believe that they're global citizens and that they have some responsibility for, for the rest of the world. And so really from the bottom of my heart, I, I want to say thank you so much for your generosity tonight. Um, I do hope that, and, and I really, really value your support. I look forward to my continued communication with, with you, with Chad Farm's continued collaboration and I do hope that you and your family have a restful and good festive season. So good night and thank you a million fold. Thank you a million fold. What a wonderful, wonderful evening. The team from Child Fund Australia will follow up with your um, pledges regarding your pledge payment. So they'll send you a link to tonight's stream. You can also share that with networks and encourage others to donate. Uh, Child Fund will be collecting donations for these three programs for the next couple of weeks. And we'd love for you to spread the word and help us raise even more. The team will be updating you on the impact of your support over the coming weeks and months. And until we meet again, thank you for your time, your generosity and your support and for one of the great evenings. Uh, have a wonderful and safe end of year. Let's hope for 2021 being a better one. But thank you. Please stay safe and have a wonderful evening. Good night.